All right, hello, geometry students. I appreciate you finding time to get your notes taken care of. Today we're going to be looking at the last section that we're going to have leading into the Unit 6 test. And the discussion for today is going to be about shapes in the Cartesian coordinate plane. So copy down your title for your notes as well as the objective. And the objective is, student will apply previously discovered properties of quadrilaterals to those same shapes in the Cartesian coordinate plane. As always, press pause anytime you need more time to copy down anything and hit play when you're ready to move on. Okay, that objective is very wordy, but it has a very simple meaning. We've been talking about a bunch of different shapes and a bunch of different properties that they have. Now we're going to see those shapes in graphs, and we're going to have to determine the existence of those properties or non-existence of those properties based upon what we see in the graphs. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're going to be seeing. Okay. To this point, we've been dealing with the different types of quadrilaterals and their properties. And we've seen that uh, many of these shapes have a lot of different properties. Okay. And those properties uh, can uh, show up a lot of different ways. Okay. But when they show up in the graph, it, it changes the feel of it. The properties are still there, but we look for them in a different way. Okay, so we're going to be inserting these shapes into the Cartesian coordinate plane. Now, you can probably bet that uh, if you run into questions like this on a star or a tax or ACT or SAT, okay, they may ask you uh, questions about parallelograms or whatever in a very straightforward manner. They may just come out and say, hey, here's a, here's a parallelogram. Which of the following properties does it or does it not have? It might be that simple. However, they can ask the exact same properties in a graph, and that kind of complicates matters a little bit. Okay, so the properties of the shapes are still there. We just need to figure out how to discover them. Okay, looking at this graph, it's very easy to see that we are looking at a quadrilateral. However, it is not as easy to see uh, whether we have any right angles or whether we have any parallel lines or how many sets of parallel lines we have. So these problems have a much different feel to them uh, simply because we're not looking at all the little marks and notations in the graph. We don't have parallel line indicators. We don't have tick marks. Okay, we don't have right angles marked in the pictures for us. We don't have side links uh, marked in the picture for us. So it becomes a, a different type of a challenge. Okay. Now many of the properties uh, that we've been talking about deal with parts of the shape either being parallel or perpendicular or congruent or maybe even all of these properties at once. Okay, so that's a little bit of a benefit in our corner. There aren't so many things that we have to look for. It's a limited number of things. We just have to apply those things to the particular types of shapes that, we're, that, we, uh, that we have. Because if you think back, there's a lot of things that are based upon line links, line segment links being congruent. A lot of things that are based upon lines being parallel. A lot of things that are based on lines being perpendicular. So it's a short list of things we have to look for. Okay, They just may be in a lot of different places. Okay, So how do we go about finding these things out? Okay, So let's see if we can't answer that. In a graph, when you are looking at lines or shapes in a graph, how will you know if two sides of a polygon are parallel? Okay. Well, we can obviously cannot use the definition that some of you are still clinging to, saying, oh, well, they don't touch. That means they're parallel. Well, there's a lot of things that do not touch. Most of them are not parallel. So we better have a better reason for that. And this is something that we've talked about earlier in this year. How do you know if two lines in a graph are parallel? Those lines will have the same slope values. Okay. So we will be calculating slope in our graphs. How will you know if you have two sides or parts of a polygon that are perpendicular. Okay, well, hopefully by now we understand that being perpendicular means that a right angle is formed. But how do you actually know if a right angle is formed when you're looking at two lines in a graph? Well, something else we talked about earlier this year, it also deals with the slopes. Okay, and we will want the slopes of two lines to be negative reciprocals of each other. 
If they are slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other, then that means we have perpendicular lines, and that means we have right angles. Okay, so that's something else we're going to be on the lookout for. In a graph, how will you know if two sides or parts of a polygon are congruent? Well, this is one of the ones that's actually, there's a lot of different answers to this guy. There's a lot of different ways to find out how long line segments are in a graph. But in a lot of cases, we're not interested in the lines, uh, in the actual lengths of the lines. We are simply interested in the lengths of the lines being congruent. And that actually will allow us to cut a couple of corners and uh, get some of the answers a little bit faster. Okay, but by the book, obviously, we can use the distance formula. If you know two points in a graph, like the two end points of a line segment, we can figure out the coordinates of those line segment, uh, those uh, end points, and we can plug into the distance formula, and that'll tell us how far those guys are apart. That's the length of the line segment. Then we can compare that length to other lengths from other line segments. One of the things that we can do is actually the midpoint formula can help us figure out uh, links, especially if we're concerned about uh, a length on one side of a location and the length of another on the other side of that same location. If we're interested in those being congruent, like saying something has been bisected, okay, then we can use the midpoint formula to tell us if a location is in fact the midpoint between two points. So that's something we can do. Okay, and one of the things we can do, and I think you're going to find this to be one of the easier things to do, is to use uh, right triangles, okay, and compare our slopes and lengths. Pythagorean theorem can tell us a length of a, a, a missing side of a triangle if we know the other two sides of the triangle. Well, in a graph, it's very easy to set up right triangles and very easy to know those two side lengths. Okay, and uh, one of the things I do is I do a lot of slope counting inside of graphs to find out if two lines are equal in length or not. Okay, so we'll talk about these a little bit on each of them. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump back to this flow chart that we talked about on day number one. Okay, so somewhere in your notes you have this thing copied down, but I want you to copy it down again and leave yourself some space around it on your page because we're going to be writing some things outside of all of these terms. Okay, so press pause if you need a moment to scribble this guy down. And then let's start uh, working through it. Okay, so remember your flow chart, work from the top down. Okay, let's question ourselves here. How will you know at the very top, how will you know if you have a polygon? Well, what is a polygon? Well, a polygon is an enclosed shape. Okay, it's an enclosed shape built entirely out of line segments. Okay, so as you work your way through the, the flow chart, you're going to be asking yourself a series of questions. First question right off the bat is, is it a polygon? Is it an enclosed shape? If it is, you can continue to move through the flow chart. If it is not, you are done right off the bat. Okay, so after you verify you have a polygon, how will you know if your figure is a quadrilateral? Well, hopefully there's no confusion on that one. Okay, we're going to ask ourselves how many sides we have. Okay, so hopefully we have four sides, which would make it a quadrilateral. Okay, if it is a quadrilateral, we can continue moving through the flow chart. If it's not a quadrilateral, then we are done with this flow chart. Okay, let's continue moving forward here. Now, we obviously have at the next level down, we have the options of being parallelograms and trapezoids and kites. Okay, well, clearly those have differing, um, differing properties to go along with them. Okay, but parallelogram and trapezoid actually have something in common. So if we are trying to identify whether we have a parallelogram or a trapezoid in a graph, chances are the easiest thing for us to check for there is parallel sides. Okay, do we have sets of sides that are parallel or not? Okay, and obviously for parallelogram, we're looking for two sets of parallel sides. On a, a trapezoid, we'd only be looking for one set of parallel sides. But in either case, we are searching for the existence of parallel sides. We would want slopes to be the same if we're finding parallelograms or trapezoids. 
On the other side of that flow chart, we have the kite hanging out there, which of course doesn't have anything to do with things being parallel, but we are looking for consecutive congruent sides. So checking for the kite, we're going to be looking for a few side lengths. Okay? And we're going to be trying to find two side lengths in a row that are congruent and then two other side lengths in a row that are also congruent. That would tell us if we have a kite going on. Okay. Now, if you cannot find uh, properties of a parallelogram or a trapezoid or a kite on that line, then obviously this flow chart is done and all you have is a quadrilateral. However, if you do find uh, that you have properties of a parallelogram, we can move forward down the, uh, further down the flow chart. Uh, if you find a trapezoid or a kite, then your flow chart is finished because there's no further uh, directions to move down in the flow chart from the trapezoid or kite. But let's say you do find that you have a parallelogram. Okay, so we're going to continue down the flow chart. Okay, we're going to check and see if perhaps we have a rectangle. Well, how are you going to know if that parallelogram is a rectangle? Well, we're going to be looking for proof of it being equiangular. Okay, all of the angles being the same. And we know in a rectangle, okay, being equiangular means we're going to have right angles on all of those uh, angles, all those interior angles. So we're going to be checking to see if we have lines that are perpendicular to each other. Okay, so we're going to be checking the slopes to see if we have negative reciprocals. Okay. Now, whether you have a rectangle or not, you're still going to check to see if you have a rhombus or not. And of course, the thing we're looking for on the rhombus is if the shape is equilateral. Okay, And so on equilateral, we're checking some side lengths. We're going to be trying to prove that all four of the side lengths are the same lengths. Okay, Now, if you found one of those answers to be yes and the other answer to be no, then you should have identified your shape with whatever the yes answer is. Okay, But if both of the uh, rectangle and rhombus both came out yes, then of course you have a square because that would mean it is regular. It's equilateral and equiangular. Okay, So these are the kind of the questions you're going to be asking yourself as you roll through these problems. Okay, so let's see if we can't see it work in a couple of examples. Okay, this shape that we looked at on the very first screen is again in front of you now. Okay, well here are the questions that the problem asked, or the, uh, the flow chart asked. Okay, well let's just start off at the top of the flow chart. Do you, in fact, have a polygon? Is this an enclosed figure built entirely out of line segments. Well, very easy to say that one. Yes, we do. Okay, that is a polygon. Okay, is our polygon a quadrilateral? Does it have four sides on it? Okay, obviously again, very easy. Okay, but you want to come through to come down the flow chart. You want to make sure that we are getting to the correct name. Okay, now in order to decide if we might have a parallelogram or a trapezoid, we said we'd be looking to see if sides are parallel or not. Well, let's look into the graph and let's see what our slopes are doing of our uh, lines. Okay, I'm going to start here on the top left side and I'm going to go, okay, from one point to another point, how does the slope change? Okay, well, as this point on the very left side, okay, we're going to count it straight out of the graph, rise over run. From one point to the next, it rises one, two, three, four, five. Okay, rises five and it runs one, two, three, four. Okay, so the slope of this upper left side of this quadrilateral is five over four. Okay, I wonder if the side across from that also has the same slope. So we're looking down here at the lower right side now. Okay, from one point to the next, left to right. Okay, we rise one, two, three, four, five, and we run one, two, three, four. Okay, so look what happened. We discovered that we have one set of parallel sides in the graph. So this may be a trapezoid, but it also might be a parallelogram if the other set of sides is also parallel. So let's check that. Upper right side, what is the slope? From one point to the next, going left to right, we drop one, two, so we got negative two, and then we run one, two, three, four, five, six, down two over six from one point to the next. What about the side across from it? 
Slope equals from one point to the next, reading left to right. We drop down one, two, so that's negative two. And we run one, two, three, four, five, six. Down two, over six. So the slopes of this set of sides is also identical. So those sides are parallel. Okay, so we have two sets of parallel sides. Okay, so that's going to put us in the left side of the flow chart. We are working in the parallelograms. Okay, so we're going to have to continue on down the flow chart to see if we have uh, rectangles, rhombuses, squares, stuff like that. Okay, now the next question wants to know if we are equilateral or not. Are these sides all the same lengths? Okay, well, let's check it out. Okay, I'm going to erase these slopes. Now, the typical thing that I do, the thing I find to be the easiest to figure out what's going on with side lengths, is to build right triangles on these side lengths. Okay, so I'm going to build a right triangle, okay, using each side of my quadrilateral. And the reason I'm building right triangles is because I like the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, and if I have two sides of a right triangle, then I can find out what's going on with the third side of the right triangle really pretty easily. Because in the graph, I can simply count out how long the side lengths of these triangles are, because they are the uh, these sides of the triangles are perfectly uh, vertical and horizontal. Okay. So I'm going to pick on uh, triangle 1 right over here, and I'm going to say, all right, triangle 1 is 4 squared plus 5 squared, and we're curious about what the hypotenuse actually equals. Okay, well, rolling through the Pythagorean theorem real quick. Okay, what I find is that this side length of this uh, quadrilateral, this parallelogram, is the square root of 41. Now, I don't really care what value that is. I'm not going to convert it to a decimal point or do anything crazy like that. All I'm curious about is does this match up with the other side lengths of the parallelogram? Okay. Well, obviously, it's going to match up with the triangle that is across from it because that one has the same side lengths, 5 and 4. Okay, but what about this other triangle that has the 2 and the 6 side lengths? I'm going to run that through the Pythagorean theorem as well and see if that comes out the same as the other triangle did. Okay, so just rolling through Pythagorean theorem real quick again. Okay, what we find is we have square root of 40 on those side lengths. Okay, so is the shape equilateral? No, it's not. They are very close to being the same length, okay, but it is not equilateral. So that is going to take being a rhombus out of the problem for us. Okay, now let's check and see if we are equiangular, okay, because it might still be a rectangle. All right, now on your paper, hopefully when you're doing your math, you will still have your slope values written down. I erased mine, but they were... 5 fourths and negative 2 sixths. Okay, so the question is are we equiangular? In order to be equiangular in a quadrilateral, you're going to have to have perpendicular lines. So the question is where two lines join together, are they forming a right angle? And we know that by checking their slopes to see if they are negative reciprocals of each other. So I'm going to start off with one of the slopes here. I'm going to pick on this guy for no particular reason. Okay, I'm just going to say, hey, I got a slope of 5 fourths. Okay, any line that wants to be perpendicular to that one, the slope is going to have to be the negative reciprocal of 5 fourths. So we're going to change the sign from positive to negative, and we're going to turn the fraction upside down. Okay. The reason we're doing this is because we want to know, does this value match the next side over from that one? Okay, We started off with the 5 fourths, so we just picked a side that was adjacent to it. And as you can see, our slopes do not match when we look at the negative reciprocals. So do we have right angles? No, we do not. Since we do not have right angles, this cannot be equiangular 
Okay, if it's not equilateral or not equiangular, then it's definitely not regular. Okay, so across that bottom line there, equilateral, we decided it is not a rhombus. Equal angular, we decided it is not a rectangle. So since it's neither a rectangle nor a rhombus, definitely not a square. So what is the most specific name that we can attach to this shape? This is a parallelogram. See how many skills they're asking you to pull together all in one problem? This is why test writers like questions like this. Okay, I know these notes are getting long, but I'm going to go through one more with you. Okay, let's have a look at one more, see if we understand this. Okay, here's a different shape. Okay, once again, it is simply impossible to eyeball this thing and decide what's parallel or not, what's perpendicular or not, what's congruent or not. We're going to have to look at the math. Okay, but very obviously getting rolling here, is it a polygon? Yes, it is. Is it a quadrilateral? Yes, it is. Okay, are our sides parallel? Well, I don't know, but we can check some slopes here. Slope equals from one point to the next. It goes up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1, 2, 3, 4. So there we have a slope of 5 fourths. Okay, over here, slope from one point to the next. Down 2, over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Down 2, over 6. Next side, slope from one point to the next. Over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Next side. Slope equals one point to the next, down two, over one, two, three, four, five. Okay, you can actually answer a couple of your questions from right here. Okay, what do we know about things being parallel or not? Okay, well, I do not see any slopes that match. Okay, so I do not see any parallel sides at all. Okay, at this point, we can disqualify the possibility that this is a parallelogram and the possibility this is a trapezoid. Okay, so I think what we probably need to do now is start looking for some side lengths because this thing might be a kite. Okay, now if we had a parallelogram or something like that, since we're looking at the slopes, we could always have gone ahead and discussed whether it was equiangular, okay, by checking those negative reciprocal slopes. Okay, but since it is definitely not a parallelogram, we're not going to have to worry about any of these guys. Those are not going to happen. Okay, the only question is, do you have a kite? Yes or no. Okay, so let's have a look. In order to determine if we have a kite, we need to know some side lengths. Okay, so again, I'm going to set me up some right triangles, and I'm going to have a look at Pythagorean theorem. Okay, and actually what you're going to learn to determine is that the rise and the run on those side lengths, okay, well those are actually the side lengths of your right triangles right there. So if you can figure out slope, then you can figure out your side lengths and vice versa. Okay, so let's have a look at what's going on here. In order to be a kite, we're going to need two sets of consecutive congruent sides. So I'm going to start working my way around the problem. If you'll remember from the last problem, this triangle was a side length of 4 and 5, and it was a length of square root of 41. So you can run through Pythagorean again to prove it, but I'm going to cut the corner on that one. Over here, this is the same as it was on the previous problem also, so that's square root of 40. Well, look what you got right there. Do we have two sets, or do we at least, do we have one set of sides that's congruent right there? No, these two consecutive sides are not congruent. Okay, so it's not looking good for the kite, but it's possible that we might be matching going one of the other directions. So I'm going to come down here uh, to this triangle right there, and I'm going to set up Pythagorean theorem. Okay, now this guy had better match the square root of 41 above it, otherwise we are not getting consecutive congruent sides anywhere. Okay, so rolling through Pythagorean theorem, I think a lot of you can already see it coming. We did not get a side length that matched. Okay, and you can very easily and quickly finish it off if there's any confusion as to whether any of your side links are matching up the way you'd like them to. Okay, you see evidence of any two consecutive congruent sides? Definitely not. 
Okay, so we know it's not a parallelogram because of parallel sides. We know it's not a trapezoid because of parallel sides. We know that it is not a kite because of mismatched side links all over the place. Okay, so the best thing that we can call this shape is a quadrilateral. Okay. I have a couple of examples that I would like us to work out, but we're going to do them tomorrow in class together. Okay, I want to make sure that we get a good grasp of this, and I don't want to punish you anymore. The notes were long enough already, but I do appreciate you uh, hanging in there and getting them all taken care of. I'll see you in class.